everybody welcome back for a new episode happy tuesday thanks for tuning on in again so we are going to be starting off today's episode with a taking a little look at eugenia's upload to tiktok she told us yesterday that she would be uploading and that Today's upload would be something out of the ordinary. It would be spicy. It would be something unexpected. It would be something to really look forward to. I don't know if you've seen it or if you have seen this upload yet or not, but when I saw it, I thought, haven't we seen this already? I mean, I was expecting to be wowed. I was expecting to see something unique, something that we haven't seen before, but... The more and more I watch Eugenia and the more and more I get to understand her as a content creator, um, the more and more I'm expecting the same. I don't really get a lot of range from her. I don't really get a lot of new ideas. It's a lot of uh, following a script. If she does something once and she realizes that it was well received or it, it got a lot of views, she'll do it again and again and again, maybe with a few slight modifications, but the foundation is still there. I don't get a lot from Eugenia as a content creator in terms of diversity. I think that she is really one note in a lot of what she does on the internet. So when I saw this, I thought, okay, well, why did you preface this video with the fact that it was going to be something out of the ordinary and it was going to be unique and it was going to be cool and exciting and new i i i don't know i don't know what i was expecting really but it i wasn't expecting a carbon copy of something that we have already seen two three weeks ago so um we'll be taking a look at that here in a moment and then we are going to do a little bit of community corner i have four major key points i want to talk about from yesterday's video and then we are going to hop in and actually finish the footage from sunday night that we did not finish that is playing in the background right now now eugenia told us that she was going to go live monday night to my knowledge never happened. I never got the notification. I do not believe that she went live any time on Monday night, even, you know, after midnight or anything like that. So this is the most up-to-date footage and what we have. Um, so we will be taking a look at all of this. Oh boy, looks like the Dobre kid comes back again. <laughs> I, I really would have thought after the first time that we saw the Dobre kid when he was on here and he was visibly annoyed with Eugenia, I was like thinking to myself, this is going to be the last time we ever see him. He is not going to want to do a battle with her ever. He keeps coming back, though. He keeps coming back, though. So we're going to take a look at the remainder of the footage from Sunday night, and then uh, that should wrap things up for today's episode and everything. But let's move on over to TikTok and take a look at Eugenia's new, exciting, unique, out-of-the-ordinary upload. All right, so what I have playing now on the screen is Eugenia's new, exciting, unique upload that she posted to TikTok sometime on Monday. Now, it may seem like deja vu because I quite literally saw this two, three weeks ago. Eugenia dances around a little bit. The Santa hat falls off of her head. She continues to lip sync to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. And then it goes on to repeat. Um, we've seen this. That was my first impression to this. Uh, we have seen her do this exact skit. We have seen her lip sync to the same exact Mariah Carey song. We have seen the Santa hat fall off. Um, I'm not really sure what is unique about this or why she made a special call to attention in terms of people maybe looking forward to this upload, but I, I, I don't know. Um, this is something that we know Eugenia likes to do. She likes to come on here and cosplay and dress up a little bit in lip sync and, you know, put on a little show for her TikTok viewers and everything. Um, some notes about this video that some people have been pointing out. One of you did send me a tweet earlier today and made the comment that we should be paying special notes to the very end of this video. 
that the end of this video is very telling that it is likely Deb was either filming or helping in some capacity of creating this TikTok video. And now actually that I look at it right now, the number one comment on here that has over 500 likes, it says the look on her face at the end, you know, Deb was right there. So I suppose what they're alluding to here is when she's finished pointing at the tree and doing her little number, um, it's kind of like, was that a good take? What do you what do you think of that one? D do you think that we should redo it again? Do you, do you think I should film it over once more? Do you do, like wh what did you think of it? So it's very subtle, but in the two seconds here at the end of this video, I can kind of pick up on what that person was saying and this comment here right here. So I'm gonna start it from 10 seconds. Go ahead and pay special attention to her face in this lip sync and tell me if you were kind of picking up on the same thing. Kind of a searching around the room, room for approval. Kind of looking at who is ever staring at her from the opposite end of this camera thinking to herself, was that a good one? What'd you think of that one? Should I post that one? It's, it's quick and it's subtle, but that's what I got from it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press play. It's in you know the last two seconds of this. kind of does the little tongue lick thing at the very end. Like, okay, all right. I think that's a wrap. I think we got what we needed. All right, director's cut. I... Okay. Um, My question here is, I mean, not only this isn't a unique upload, but why is the Santa hat falling seemingly a recurring thing that is happening in this skit in particular um is the wardrobe malfunction done deliberately because i suppose that with the wig that she's wearing it would be difficult to try to get a santa hat onto it to stick like that but that's just very strange you know you go and you film the same skit twice and in both skits a few weeks pieced out the santa hat falls so I, I don't know, is that done on purpose? Is that because the wig is too big and you can't get the Santa hat to fit onto it? Um, I'm a little bit lost on that. But we can go back and watch the original. So when even was the original? The original one got a little over three and a half million views. And this was posted the second week of November. So again, I'm not playing these with sound because of copyright issues on YouTube, but sort of the same thing. Santa hat falls midway through the video. She's doing a lip sync, uh, dancing around, just kind of waving extremities all over the place, uh, doing what we normally see in a Eugenia Cooney TikTok live uh, lip sync. So a lot of the comments in this are what you would expect. Um, very similar to what you would see on any kind of Eugenia post. A lot of them are the same. It is the same repeated cycle of a conversation that people continue to have regarding Eugenia Cooney on the internet. A lot of it is, oh boy, I just come in and I check in to see if, you know, she's still fill in the blank. Uh, this this is really something. This is quite a video. This is a lot to take in. I'm not really sure what to think about this. Um, I'm seeing on the comments here on this video, someone tagged the corporate TikTok account with just the comment, really, question mark. Um, so it's seemingly like there is sort of a meeting of the minds regarding the TikTok community on here and who views these videos of thinking that, you know, does TikTok have some type of social responsibility to provide in this regard? Um, do uh, Does everyone belong on the platform? Should everyone be allowed to? Would it be discrimination in the event that someone would be taken down or reserved to a specific age group? We're actually going to talk about that a little bit more in Community Corner here in a second. But it's, it's a lot of the same. Um, a lot of the comments in this 
TikTok from the second week of November are a direct parallel to what was posted earlier on Monday. Um, I don't know, y'all. Uh, I guess that you can let me know what you think about the Santa baby outfit and what, you know, apparently this is a thing that she has done year after year. As you all know, I have only started covering Eugenia Cooney earlier this year, so I have not been around for, you know, year after year after year like some of you have. But apparently the Santa baby outfit thing is a recurring uh, arc on her program. Um, This happens every year. It's uh, sort of her go-to outfit and everything, but um, yeah. So this is the unique upload that Eugenia was alluding to from yesterday. Alrighty, back on over here. So we're going to hop on into Community Corner. As I said earlier, there are four major things that I want to talk about in today's recap-ish conversation from yesterday's video. The first topic of conversation I want to jump into is basically what the video was trying to communicate yesterday. I mean, you guys saw the title, you saw the thumbnail and everything. And it's it's been very bad recently in terms of her promoting Jeffrey's products and constantly talking about how great of a person and awesome and kind and wonderful and amazing and insert adjective Jeffrey is. But yesterday was particularly bad. Um, It was almost like any conversation. I I mean, really, you could be talking about cow manure or um, just something trigonometry. And somehow the conversation would come back to how amazing Jeffrey's new coffee skincare line is. I, I mean, it's getting to the levels of if it's not haven't hasn't already reached an unhealthy level and i think that friendship shouldn't be something that is very overbearing i don't think that you should constantly be breathing down someone's neck or constantly praising them or constantly talking about them i i mean really when i was you know referring to the mean girl scene from yesterday when lindsay lohan was looking at herself in the mirror and thinking to herself i'm always talking about regina george And if I'm not talking about Regina George, I'm praying that someone brings her up so that I can talk about her some more. It is giving that and then some. And the scary part about all of this is that it seems to be uh, ramping up. It seems to be gaining momentum. Uh, You know, we talk about the snowball at the top of the hill kind of gradually going and it picks up speed and it becomes a bigger snowball. And by the time it's at the bottom of the hill, it's this, you know, gigantic boulder of a snowball. That's kind of how I am viewing Eugenia with Jeffrey in terms of their friendship or their situationship or whatever you would want to call it. It doesn't necessarily surprise me in terms of who I know Eugenia Cooney to be. And what I mean by that is Eugenia Cooney is someone that has told us, has communicated and expressed to the audience that she has always had difficulty making and keeping friends. So if you are someone that was pulled out of ninth or 10th grade, you didn't finish high school all the way, you left, you did cyber school, you were homeschooled, you were whatever, because of events that took place, aka people were giving you a hard time, you were being bullied, you just didn't really fit in. If you, in my opinion, had a lot of those issues growing up and a lot of your developmental years in terms of making friendships. This isn't exclusive to high school, any, by the way. And I'm not trying to imply that if you went to cyber school or you were homeschooled, you were damaged or you're weird or anything like that. I just think for Eugenia, her particular experience growing up and not having friends or being in a situation where it was difficult for her to make friends, it's sort of leading into her 20s and it's following her into adulthood. So Eugenia's warped interpretation of what friendship is on top of the fact that she has had these strange developmental years throughout her teenage times, it just it kind of seems like the perfect storm for someone who really doesn't understand what a healthy friendship is. 
So when Eugenia is now placed in this situation over the past year of someone who she has idolized for a very long time, giving her the time of day, inviting her out to events, introducing her to other people, um, other TikTok creators, kind of giving her more of a platform and everything. It's probably uh, something that she doesn't really know how to handle it. It's a little bit intoxicating for her. So what she's trying to do in her best way is to not screw it up because this is the best thing that anyone has ever given her before. If you've never had a friend and you've never known what friendship is and you've gone 20-something years without a consistent friendship or you know understanding what the foundation and premise of friendship is, when someone who you idolize jumps into your life kind of willy-nilly out of nowhere and says, hey, I'll be your friend, she's going to be very careful and meticulous about the decisions that she makes in terms of not trying to upset that person. And that's kind of what we've been seeing here. It's been all positive, all positive. He, he's the best. I would never say anything bad about him. He's the greatest person ever. He makes amazing products. Um, it is just 24-7 butt kissing. And in my opinion, that's not what friendship is. You should you should like people who you are associated with and you should understand that they have a good character. That's kind of like what draws you to certain people or you're like minded on certain things. But in my opinion, I don't think that you should only be complimenting your friends. It's nice to be positive. It's nice to be helpful. It's nice to cheer someone up. It's nice to give off good vibes and everything. But in my opinion, what makes for a good friend is someone that will call you out on your bullshit. Because they recognize the good parts of you, but they can also recognize the parts of you that need some work. So if Eugenia is constantly only going to the side of friendship where it's nice, 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 kind, 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 that does not do anything for Jeffrey as a person other than fuel his ego and tell him what he already thinks of himself. Because I think that Jeffrey Star is a very narcissistic person. I think that he has an extremely large ego. And then on top of the fact that he has that he is someone that kind of has gone from both ends of the spectrum and is more well-rounded in terms of knowing what life is. Now that he is in a position in his late 30s to have over $100 million, I think that he views people um, sort of in a very lowly way. That unless you are doing something for him or fueling his ego you aren't really going to be an asset and you're going to be tossed by the wayside. And in addition to that, I think that even if you are boosting his ego and you are someone that he likes keeping around because you kind of gas him up and everything, I don't know if you stick around for too long because I think that Jeffrey kind of gets bored with people. And this is another concept that we've kind of talked about on here is once you become super ultra mega wealthy, well, you know, I, I mean, I am sure that there are probably <laughs> there might be one or two of you watching, but a majority of us, 99 plus percent of us watching right now, we don't know what it's like to have 10 figures in our bank account. Um, we don't know what it is like to be at a stage in your life when you do not have to worry about anything financially. You at that point, you really don't need to have goals necessarily. You don't really need to challenge yourself. You don't really need to learn a lot of the new skills that make for a better person or a better businessman or businesswoman that makes you more well-rounded so that you can inevitably make money. So I know that this kind of conversation is sort of taking an existentialism turn and Maybe that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. But if you can understand Jeffrey and you can understand what he wants, I think that you can better understand how he views friendships and how that sort of information might be applied to someone like Eugenia. I think that what he sees in Eugenia is an opportunity to spice up his cosmetics line. He knows that Eugenia is a very hot topic a very hot, controversial topic on social media right now. 
when people see Eugenia, they, you know, their jaw drops to the floor. They get very wide eyed. They feel a lot of emotions. So in my opinion, what Jeffrey is trying to do is he is trying to take that, that, that jaw dropping to the floor, those emotions that people feel, and he's trying to monetize it. He's trying to sell it. He's trying to make money off of it. So whenever you're seeing Eugenia, and it's, it goes without saying anymore, whenever you see Eugenia in some type of iteration, you are also seeing Jeffree Star. As you know, recently, I, I mean, she's always been a fan of his, but now, I mean, you cannot do anything without having Jeffrey's name or his products get brought up within 30 seconds of talking to her. So I think that Jeffrey, someone that has an obscene amount of money um, at this point, he probably thinks to himself a lot, I can have within reason any guy i want i can have any sports car i want i can travel anywhere i want to go i can you know get a private jet to take me wherever i can have any house in any part of the world that i want so when you kind of beat life when you you know what i mean like you know when you beat a video game it's like well i've done everything i'm, I'm the best i <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, the only thing at that point, in my opinion, for people who have that amount of money is to make more money because that's the only step that other people have over them. If you have a hundred million dollars, you want $500 million. If you have $500 million, you want to be a billionaire. If you want to be a billionaire, you want to be a more wealthy billionaire than other billionaires. I so I think that's what you kind of see at the 0.1% level and what we are kind of seeing with his interest in wanting to be Eugenia Cooney's friend. Because, and you know what, I'll, I'll reference a comment that I saw a couple weeks ago because I thought this made a very good point. Jeffrey has known about Eugenia for a very long time. Jeffrey has known that Eugenia Cooney has been on the internet, uh, you know, been a fan of his MySpace. We even heard him say that one time that he has known her since 2008 and everything. So my question to that is, if this person means so much to you, if this person is your friend, if you care about this person, why now? Why in 2023... Have you now expressed interest in wanting to be friends with Eugenia, invite her out to Wyoming, invite her out to LA, introduce her to all your friends, have her standing next to you at your birthday party, seated uh, two seats away from you, getting the scorpion cake dinner and everything? Why now? Where was Eugenia's invite in 2019, back when you were friends with like Trisha Paytas and other YouTubers? I mean, you knew that she liked you back then. Right? So why now in 2023? My thought on that is I think that Jeffrey is, well, and this is probably going along with a lot of other businesses too, but I think that a lot of people are trying to restructure, regroup, and rethink their brand. And what we've seen with Jeffrey is he's been pushing out a lot of products recently. So if he can push out Gothic Beach, Scorpio and the the coffee stuff, like all within a three month period, he needs someone that can constantly be talking about it and shoving it in people's faces. So I think that that is what he's capitalizing on by having such a controversial, always online person like Eugenia Cooney. Whereas in the past, say 2019, when Jeffrey was doing his thing on YouTube and he was at the pinnacle of his career, in my opinion, he didn't need Eugenia Cooney. You know, even before he really became friends with Eugenia Cooney, we saw how Jeffrey viewed Eugenia. We saw how lowly he thought of her. When they were in a live battle, when it was him, Paul, Barbs, and Eugenia, this was very early on, and they rigged it so Eugenia would get taken out of it, and then they started laughing and snickering and saying, 5150, get her the F out of here! That tells me what Jeffree Star thought of Eugenia from 2008 to 2022. But because there is a new business opportunity presenting itself and because there is a way to think about this and, oh, you know what? 
yeah, that girl's weird. Yeah, that girl's pathetic. Yeah, I don't think much of that girl. I don't want to be her friend. But maybe, just maybe, I could create a pseudo relationship with her that could benefit me financially. And I think that that's as, that is what we have been seeing play out in the past three, four, five months. And I, I think that Jeffrey kind of turned that whole 5150 video because he did get a lot of shit for that. He did get a lot of crap for that. Um, you know, making fun of her saying that, get her out of here, get her out of here. Thing. So I, I think that he took that which was something very ugly and was bad PR for him, and he turned it into a way to make money. And honestly, honestly, that's what good that's what good business people do. I mean, you might hate the guy, you might you might hate you know you might hate everything he does. You may think he's a nasty person and everything, but taking a bad situation and somehow finding a way to flip it so that you can make money. <laughs> I mean. That's just how I view it. But um, we will continue to see Eugenia and Jeffrey's friendship delve further and further into whatever corridor it is going down. So I don't know. Only time will tell. Moving on to the third topic of Community Corner is something that I talked a little bit about in yesterday's live stream. Eugenia needs to stop with... I really don't want to use I don't want to use the term just because there are certain buzz terms here on YouTube that you know kind of like aren't really well welcomed or anything but I can you know I have I I know that like once I describe it you guys will think to yourself oh okay you know so, sort of like how I say a lot of the time fill in the blank Eugenia needs to stop in situations on here on TikTok when she's getting into battles with people from other countries or people with different backgrounds or people that uh, may not speak English that well, she needs to quit making these little snide comments that she has been. Um, she has been imitating people. She has been mocking people. She has, in my opinion, been patronizing people. And it's really not just a good look. Um, when we talk about separation of condition versus separation of person, I think that this conversation right here is very much so a separation of person kind of topic. Eugenia coming on here and mocking a Syrian refugee and saying all these horrible things and, oh, you know, they're a scammer or, you know, coming on here and making fun of the fact that someone wanted to make Mexican cheese for Jeffrey and... Um, you know, just the other night saying, oh, Jeffrey, hey, this guy's from Romania. Are you in the mood for that tonight? You know, Jeffrey, you have a hundred boyfriends. So I guess uh, if you're in a Romanian mood tonight, you know, you could go for this guy. Like, as if you were talking about going out to eat. Like, are you guys feeling Italian tonight? Do, do you guys want to do Thai? Would you like to go out? And um, it, that is not how you speak about people. Comparing someone, comparing someone's nationality, ethnicity, uh, culture, background to a conversation like you would be going out to have dinner somewhere. Oh, you guys feeling hibachi tonight? Let's go get some Chinese. Like, that is not the way that you talk about people. <laughs> so I really would like to see her either, you know, it's very difficult to get an apology out of Eugenia Cooney just because she never thinks that she has anything to apologize for. But I suppose if we can't get an apology, I would like to see that kind of behavior to stop. Um, that's not how you talk to people. And condescension and patronizing people, it isn't as direct as it had always meant to be. Um, it's not always someone crossing their arms, looking down at you and saying the words, I'm better than you. It's very subtle. So, Eugenia, when you come on here and you get in a live with someone from a different country or maybe someone that speaks broken English, don't mock them, don't imitate them, don't mimic them, don't point out things in the background of their footage, such as the fact that they live in a tent and ask if it's comfy. There are a lot of ways to patronize people that are very subtle, and that's kind of what people 
who do these kinds of things and talk to people this way, they think that they can get away with it because they they think that they're being sneaky. And I think that Eugenia thinks that her audience doesn't pick up on these things. So because she comes on here and she speaks in a very happy, upbeat voice and she talks about positive things and she talks about wanting to promote kindness, that gives her some type of absolution to being a crappy person and saying bad things and or, or not even saying bad things, acting in such a way that you are communicating as to how you feel about other people. If you come on the internet or you, you know anywhere in life and you feel like you need to stick your nose up at people and tell them I'm better than you, it isn't necessarily going to be in the words of I'm better than you. It's going to be more subtle. It's going to be. So this is not a good look for Eugenia. Um, not a good look at all. I would really like to see this to stop. I didn't want to label this with any kind of word or any type of concept or whatever, just because, you know, there are certain things that I have to be cognizant of, of having a platform on here. I mean, you know, when you look at it objectively, I am a content creator with, you know, tens of thousands of followers. So if I come on here and I accuse someone of something, it, and I understand that, you know, like me explaining right now, it might kind of seem like a cop out. It kind of make might make me seem like a wuss, but there are certain things that with critique channels and reaction channels and what I like to do on here, I do not ever want to come across as someone that is making claims, attacking, or defaming people. So read along the lines of that. That's all that I mean by that. Um, moving on to the last port of Community Corner, um, the invitation to Los Angeles. Now, Eugenia has been talking about this in, you know, these live fest competitions and how the top 10 people or whatever get invited to uh, Miami or they get invited to LA for some type of creator awards. We have referred to them as the e-begging global finals. I'm not exactly sure if they go in person and then they do a battle there and it's like some type of tournament or if it's just some showcasing. It's like, oh, look at all these popular TikTokers in one space. Let's take a bunch of pictures and uh, let's have some important people say some words and then you can all fly back to where you came from. I am not sure what this event entails, but Eugenia told us yesterday that she has been invited to some type of event in Los Angeles along with Paul. So uh, I'd imagine that that would take place sometime in, you know, early 2024. I don't think that that's something that they would organize and have done this close to the end of the year like this. So uh, this is perhaps something that we will be taking a look at sometime in January or February. In terms of this, when I heard that she received the invitation to LA, I was surprised. I was definitely surprised, especially based on the conversation and what I had to say regarding inviting someone like Eugenia Cooney to come out and basically represent your app and represent how that looks and what that might communicate. And, you know, um, the concept of this and should it be allowed, should it be, does it kind of fall into the category of discrimination? In my opinion, in this scenario of what we're talking about here, if a company were to opt to not invite Eugenia to their event and that be called discrimination, I do not necessarily think that discrimination would be the word that would be the Cinderella shoe to fit here. Discrimination, in my opinion, is something that is along the lines of someone's skin color. It is along the lines of someone's innate traits, something, you know, that uniquely is innately words, words, words. It's, you know, if she were a lesbian. And they didn't want to invite her because she was a lesbian. If she was black and they didn't want to invite her because she was black. If she was um, an amputee and they didn't want her because she was an amputee. So I do think that in discrimination, 
there are certain topics and there are certain scenarios where it is a I may I not I might not be communicating this well just because it doesn't sound good when it comes out, but I do think in certain scenarios like this, it is okay to pick and choose because I do not think Eugenia coming on here and saying this is discrimination is the same thing as a black woman coming on here and talking about, well, I wasn't invited because I'm a black woman. I think that this goes down more of a route of uh, a medical conversation and being deemed um, ill-fit for the scenario. This is not being gay. This is not having a skin color. This is not having something um, in terms of something that someone, um, you know, it's like a part of who they are or like a part of what they were born with in terms of biology and things like that. This falls down into a different corridor. And the exclusion of this kind of topic in this scenario falls into a different category, in my opinion. Um, and I understand that this is a very, very slippery slope of a conversation. That's why I'm doing my best to word this the best way I can. Because, well, how do you look at that? Are all people who struggle with EDs now going to be taken off of, you know, scenarios where they should be allowed to participate or where they could? I, I mean, do you disqualify everyone because of, and oftentimes this is where this conversation leads. It all goes into one big laundry pile and it says, well, if you're going to do this for this person, then you have to apply this to everybody. And then they don't want to apply it to everybody. So then they just end up allowing everyone. I do think that in the, the context of discrimination, there are certain exclusions that apply to that. I do not think that every variable about someone is necessarily a variable that can fall into the context of being able to be discriminated against. So if, for example, there were a variable that someone was bringing to a social media platform that was potentially harmful or potentially dangerous or communicated things that were not very beneficial to the rest of society, I don't think necessarily that that's falling into the realm of discrimination. But I feel like in a legal sense, this is so messy. This is so messy. And it's a tough conversation to have. So <laughs> this is why I saved this one last for the community corner today, just because I, I know that this is a slippery slope. I know that this is controversial. I know that this is something that hits close to home for a lot of people. Because when you exclude people from things and you say, we don't want you or you're not allowed to be here. I mean, what does that say? What does that say? So if you're going to do that, you better be making an argument on some pretty solid grounds. So I would love to hear what you all have to say about that and everything. I Again, I did my best in trying to convey my opinion regarding this and the, you know, the potential of her being invited to some type of event like this with other content creators and putting that out onto the internet and everything. Um, let me know what you all think. Um, I also just want to say one last time is that I hope that it didn't come across to anyone in a negative way that has experienced EDs in the past or has gone through things that they felt put them in a position in life where other people wanted to exclude them. That is not what I was trying to communicate. Not at all. Not at all, not at all, not at all. I just think that this is a very difficult topic to address. So, it, you know, maybe I should have wrote a script for this section. Maybe, maybe I should have wrote out my ideas and edited it down a bit instead of just freely talking like this. <laughs> all right, y'all. 
let it let us move on into what we didn't get to from Sunday night's live stream footage. I think we stopped somewhere about like an hour ish in, so we will pick it up from there. Let me find the exact timestamp. Oh my gosh, spam, spam, spam. Thank you so much for the live fest. Thank you. Your show, yeah, I think a lot of people's do. You know, like I said, I know like sometimes people kind of make like a really big deal and be like, oh my gosh, name showing, like whatever. But I think like sometimes people's veins just kind of like show more than others. Caitlin, Caitlin with the hands hearts. Oh my gosh, Caitlin. All right, so in the live stream from Saturday, she said something very similar. Someone in the chat said something along the lines of um, v visible visibility of bones. And Eugenia's response to that was, well, I, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, maybe you could see something like that. But um, here's how you got to think about that or how I think about it, at least. Um, aren't you typing that comment right now um aren't, aren't you a possessor of bones as well don't you have bones doesn't jeffrey have bones I, I mean when you really think about it we all have bones so you sitting here saying that i have bones i mean you know that's kind of a no-brainer because we all do so uh yeah the fact that you see it it's kind of like well yeah it's there again completely takes away from the main point of the conversation in my opinion i do not know if this is trolling or if this is her actually trying to come up with some argument against someone in the chat uh, it's a, it's difficult for me to tell sometimes so this is sort of along the lines of the same thing that we saw from saturday well everybody has bones I have bones, you have bones, Jeffrey has bones, uh, veins, well, it, I, we all have blood, right? I mean, where's, where's all that stuff going, right? You know, I mean, I, I just think that, you know, with some people, you know, you can, you can see it, you can't see it, you know, blah, 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 takes away from the main point of the conversation. Um, and again, if that's not a conversation you want to have, I don't understand the point of reading the comment out loud to begin with. If you know what that person is trying to bring up and have a conversation with you about and you don't have interest in talking about it or you don't have an answer or an explanation to it, then why bring it up at all? I mean, Eugenia chooses what comments to read aloud. So she is controlling the conversation and the narrative on these TikTok live streams. So why read a comment where someone says, girl, I can see your veins, if you don't want to go down that path and talk about it? I, I mean, so she is, she, she wants to talk about it, but her response is kind of a troll response. Thank you. Peeps with the live fest clappers. All you guys going so hard with those clappers. Thank you so much, guys. 30 points to get to 65 in community favorites. Thanks, everybody. Dehydration makes veins pop? Aw. But there's other things that can make veins pop, too, guys. I don't really think it's like, I don't think so. Actually, no. There's been times I've gone to the doctor and they've been like, sometimes if you drink water, it will make your veins like easier to like get at. A lot of time my veins aren't that hard. Peeps, <laughs> oh my gosh, you got us to 50% of our clapper goal. Peeps, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you with all of these live fest clappers. See, I, I genuinely can't tell if that's her troll. I am leaning more toward this being a troll comment than an actual genuine defense to that comment, but I'm not sure. I, I'm really not sure. So when people come in here and say queen of gaslighting, I, I think that she's very good at it because the whole point of gaslighting and the whole point of trolling people is to make them, you know, question themselves. It's like, well, are you being for real? Are you, 
And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I don't know if her coming in here and saying, well, one time I did go to the doctor and they told me that if you drink water, it makes your veins not so visible. So therefore, I have refuted your argument. Ripped pantyhose! Thank you for the galaxy! It's just obtuse. My arms? Why are you guys so into my arms tonight? I see you guys like, OMG, her arms. I don't know, guys. These are just kind of my arms. What can I say? <laughs> Sorry if my veins are really bothering you, but yeah. My gosh, these spammers don't ever stop. It's so ridiculous. Thank you, peeps, with the life. It's like, why don't they get it, guys? Like, I don't understand. I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually kind of like it when they spam request her with things because whenever someone sends an invite or a request to be on live with her, it dulls down the music. <laughs> so like, we don't have to hear the music as loud and then it's less likely that I'll have to go through and mute a segment of this video because there was a copyright claim. <laughs> have you ever noticed that? Like when someone is requesting to be on live with her, it it cuts the music down about 50%. But then when she clicks decline, the music goes back up real loud again. <laughs> Listen for that if you haven't caught that ever. I'm just kind of like, guys, if I kept declining somebody, like, I don't want to be mean. But like, I would kind of get like, okay, maybe I should stop requesting a zillion times. They look a little gray. You guys think my arms look gray? I don't know. I don't really think they look gray. I think they're all right, guys. I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult to be making those kind of assumptions, especially now that I have been informed that Eugenia uses filters when she does these. Um, that kind of throws everything out the window. And when I see something on the screen, I I'm not sure if that's how that person looks in real life. Um, I, I think that's how a lot of people view social media anymore. Um, you know, I think that people have gotten a lot better with that. They do realize that a lot of the images and things that they see on Instagram and like of models and things like that, it is digitally altered. So it doesn't really give the human experience. But just whenever we have seen in a few instances of watching Eugenia on a live stream like this, and then the filter will cut off for a second, or it won't catch up to her while she's moving around real quickly. It, it's like, well, if I know that you used a filter on that live stream when you were with Jeffrey and Hair by Jay a few weeks ago, I'm always going to, to assume that you, there is a possibility that you might be altering the way that you look. So. Uh... Don't worry. They're fine. Ale, thank you so much with the finger hearts. Thank you, Ale. They don't. Oh, right? I'm just kind of like, where do you see gray? <laughs> Gaslight alert, but guys, okay, number one, why do some of you guys care about my arms like that much to begin with, you know? Immediately redirects the argument. So, yeah, in my opinion, coming on here and talking about the whole gray thing, and saying, no, what, 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 no, what are you talking about? That is gaslighting, in my opinion, because you are someone that has shown your platform that you use filters. So if you are someone that is known to use filters, and then you come on here later, and someone calls you out for it, you know, not as directly as you use filters, but they said something along the lines of it, you come on here and say, what, no, what are you talking about? They don't look like that. And then they call you a gaslighter, which is basically calling out what you're doing. She is now redirecting the conversation to, well, why do you guys care at all? Why is that important? Why is this uh, germane to what we're doing on here right now? Th this, th So I, I, I don't know. 
Is this her kind of getting put in a corner? Because it, it, calling her a gaslighter in this scenario with the whole filter thing, I think that that's spot on. And the fact now that she is trying to change it into, well, why do you guys care about the way that I look? Tells me that if you're trying to move the conversation and put eyes on something else or get people to think about something else, that tells me that they they got you. They got you. Gaslight alert, but guys, okay, number one, why do some of you guys care about my arms like that much to begin with, you know? And number two, I don't know. I mean, if you think they look gray, I don't care. Nothing wrong with the color gray. But I don't really think they even look all that gray to me. So it's kind of like, whatever. Raylan, thank you for the team bracelet. Thank you. Oh, I'm getting so scam like, like spam. This is so insane. Corin, thank you so much. See, like, what's the point of pressing decline over and over and over again? Y you know that as soon as you press decline, there's going to be another one that pops up. So why not just leave it there permanently? Thank you, Corin. I will not stop spamming. They have nothing better to say. Yeah, exactly. Barbie Shan, thank you so much for the clappers. It's kind of like, why do people care? It's like if somebody else has like veins showing or they have like, they think their arms look gray or they think whatever. It's kind of like at the same time, I mean, people are allowed to say that and think that and people can have like, have, feel however they feel. But it is kind of like, why do people care so much also? It is kind of like, what? Well, this goes back to the conversation of why people watch you to begin with, Eugenia. In a way, by saying that, you're interpreting it as someone coming for you as a hater, but that person pointing that out might be coming from a way different viewpoint of concerning. Um, that's not okay. Something needs to be addressed. So you sitting there on the pink couch and saying, well, why do you even give a shit? two wildly different standpoints. It doesn't matter, guys. <laughs> it doesn't affect others. You can say it affects others, but it doesn't. Like, guys, at the end of the day, it's kind of like... Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because when you come on the internet and you put things out onto the internet, not all of what you are communicating and showing to millions of people... Eugenia, your, your videos get millions of views. And not all of your communication is going to be verbal. And what I mean by that is when you come on here and you dance around and you show certain things and you kind of make things look all happy, happy, joy, joy, and fun, that is communicating something. You are not directly coming on here and reading a script and saying this is blah, blah, blah. But not all communication is that black and white. There's a lot of gray with you. So... I don't think it's fair for you to sit here and say that this doesn't affect anybody else. I'm not doing anything. How does this? Either you're ignorant, you know, and don't care, or you... <laughs> or, or she just, she genuinely thinks that her wrong point of view is correct. So yeah, it's, it's one of those three things. Um, which I suppose that if you were a more critical viewer of Eugenia, your viewpoint would probably land somewhere along the lines of she knows and doesn't care. Like, you know, they're my arms. It's not doing anything to your arms. It's not doing anything to anyone's arms. Lindsay, thank you so much for the live fest. Thank you, Lindsay. Oh my gosh, guys, we're at over 700 shares now. Everybody's sharing out the live. Thank you so much, guys. Guys, let's see if we can maybe get to like, let's see if we can get, oh, Juliana, I love you. Thank you with the love you gift. Let's see if we can get to a thousand shares, guys. We're not that far. And we're getting really close to 400,000 likes, guys, so. Everybody keep double tapping the screen. Let's see if we can maybe get there. Guys, I love all these butterflies. I love butterflies so much. 
How did you guys know it's one of my favorite emotes? Like, oh my gosh, yes. Block them from the other phone. Okay, guys, honestly, I returned my other phone. I was just kind of like, is this too much? Like, I can see why people have them. But all the double notifications and everything, I was just kind of like, do I really need two phones? Like, you're amazing, peeps. Thank you. Katie, thank you for saying I'm so beautiful. You're so sweet. Why am I twitching? Okay, guys, people always like to say that when I'm live. They always just kind of like to be like, Eugenia, why are you twitching? Why this or that? Um, and I think a lot of the time, guys, like, I'm really not twitching. Like, I'm literally just kind of, like, moving. Um, and I, a thank you, Carlos, with the heart me. And, like, listen, I am sorry, like, if I'm moving in, like, you know, like, a weird way or anything like that. But I really don't think that I'm twitching. Maybe I'm moving weirdly or something, but, you know. Yeah, you genuinely don't see twitching? Exactly. I'm telling you guys, it's because I'm not twitching. I don't know what's with these people thinking I'm twitching all the time, but I'm not. The choker's too big. I mean, it's a little bit loose. I don't actually think it's that bad though, guys. I think it's fine. You're thank you with the rose. Let's have kindness in the chat. Exactly. Thank you, Nova. Exactly. It's like, I understand not everybody likes me. And that's okay, everyone. Not everyone's always gonna. But, you know, it's kind of like there's so many other people alive, guys. Keep in mind that if you don't like somebody, that, like, you don't have to watch them. You know? Pin A against TV. Thank you for the heart me's, guys. Should I accept a four-way? Should we see what- <gasps> Hi! Oh my god, I've always hey, wanted to go live with you! I've always wanted to go live with oh you! Oh my gosh, really? It's nice to meet yes. you! Hi, nice hi Anna Gina! Hi, Danny! Wait, how do I say your name? Oh, Anna it's a really weird name. Um, it's Eugenia. <laughs> Eugenia. Danny, you don't know how to say no one's name. Do you want a battle? Do you want to do one name? battle? My name. I have like the weirdest name. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, so you guys battling and stuff? Yeah, we just do that kind of much like every day, pretty much. Nice. Usually. That's awesome. All right, guys, everybody double tap this. <clears throat> Wait, yo, you know, where are you top. from? Me? I'm from Connecticut. Where are you guys from? I'm from Cali. What country is that? Oh, nice. That's cool. Did what country is that? that? Um, United States. Where are you from, Danny? Uh, United States too. He's Wait, from California. California. I didn't hear you. Danny, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm from the US too. So, yeah. Oh, All right, guys. Everybody hey, Kennedy, thank you. Yeah, we need guys, double taps, guys. Everybody, everybody guys. double tap those. Cool you, Kennedy, things. though, I like your room. It goes hard. Oh, mine? Yeah, I, I oh, need some stuffed you. animals like that. Thank Look at mine. Me. I have a lot. A lot of like cute things around. Yeah, that oh, goes hard, you, bro. Uh, I love Grogu. <laughs> He's so cute on the Mandalorian. Me too. I have a small one too. What? The... Thank you, Alondra. Oh, oh hi. Sorry. What? The... I know. All right, guys. Double what? tap. That's cool. I went to the bathroom for one second. What? What's up, you guys? In the eggplant emojis. Oh my gosh! It went from like butterflies to eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, and those eggplants like crazy. Man, chill, messy. All right, guys. Hey, thank you for the rules. I appreciate you. Santa, thank you so much for the live fest class. I cannot be in the backpack. <laughs> Bro, we need, we need Nate back or something. This is crazy. I know. <laughs> Wait, uh, Eugenity, are you single? Uh, yeah, I am actually. Are you single, Daddy? Yeah. yeah. Are you? Six oh, roses, guys. Okay, one more. Two more. Oh, one more. Oh, we already got doubles, bro. Yeah, six roses. What? Wait, so like, what, what do you think of like, uh, like, are you into like Hispanic men? Hispanic men? Um, it depends on the guy. You know, like, if it was someone I felt a connection to, um, then you never know. I mean, it depends on the person. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> 
Huh? Guys, doubles are starting soon. Yeah, after this one, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do that, but yeah. Doubles. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. your makeup bro please come on oh, guys jeffrey's makeup is the best though i gotta say real. his new coffee collection oh my gosh jeffrey bro <laughs> christopher columbus with the around the world what <laughs> christopher <laughs> i love you so much oh my gosh thank was that you. jeffrey star it's it's christopher columbus you know it's this founder of america huh it's for the star of america <laughs> Oh yeah. Guys, where I need a snipe here, guys. But seriously, everybody, um, thank you guys so much for everything. Everybody, please, before I do go, spam those Jeffrey emotes, guys, in the chat. Jeffrey, I can never thank you enough for everything tonight. <laughs> like, you totally didn't have to do anything, but I can't believe that we're number one right now in regionals. Like literally today, I was like, if I get on for a bit, maybe I'll get top 50. So my mind is like so blown. Um, like seriously, thank you so much. You are like so amazing and such an amazing friend. And you're just one of the best people in the world. So I love you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. We gotta get you up in that tournament tonight. I can't wait. And thank you so much, Ollie Oblox tonight. Heaps, no caller ID, um, everyone that's been in here and showing so much love and everything, guys. I love you guys so much. Um, I am going to be getting off. But guys, um, if Jeffrey were to go live again tonight, everybody should go to his live. I'm sure everyone already is going to do that. But if you're not, and help him get up in the tournament, you guys. Like, honestly, nobody deserves it more than him. I feel like he's made TikTok just like such a better place for like so many people and he's just like one of the kindest most amazing people sorry i'm having such a hard time reading chat because this spammer it's like the same guy he has like a zillion accounts and like he never starts requesting me but everybody please support jeffrey if he goes live tonight he how how is how has jeffrey made tiktok a better platform all he does is what you do. He co he comes on here and e bags. He comes on here. He puts on makeup. He, he makes sassy comments. He makes fun of you. Um, how has Jeffrey Star made TikTok a better platform? And you can't answer that question by just saying, "Well, he's kind, wonderful, awesome, and amazing, and his cosmetics are great." That's a that's a very large far-reaching comment to say that a single person has made an app an app as substantial as tiktok a single person has made an impact on an app he's made it such a better place uh, i i i don't how how, how? I, I would love to hear her answer to that but I'm sure I, I I'm sure I know what the answer would be. Well, he's just awesome. I love him. He's he's great. He deserves it, like literally more than anyone. <laughs> and why, why does someone with a hundred million dollars deserve to receive more donations on this little app so that they can move up in the rankings? Why does Jeffrey Star deserve that more than anyone else? I, I would honestly I would think that he would want to he would be one of the last people that would be deserving of that there are so many other people that would need these little emojis that equal money that I mean a thousand dollars for Jeffrey or whatever it is to move him up in the rankings or whatever th nothing nothing do you know how much a thousand dollars could mean to someone ordinary a thousand dollars could mean making rent for the month or not um being able to catch up on a student loan 
uh, being able to pay off their credit card bill. So no, I don't think that Jeffree Star has made TikTok a better place. And I also don't think that he is the most deserving person of going up in the rankings like this. I'm, I'm just like getting really tired of it. All right, everybody, I'm going to get going. I will probably be back on tomorrow, guys. So, all right. Love you guys. Bye. All right. Well, we are caught up. Actually, we are, you know, caught up in everything. So the next episode we do take a look at, it will be either some uh, footage from Tuesday or Wednesday. And then if not, we will go back and take a look at the hours and hours of footage that we have from last week that we have not done yet. So let me know what y'all think about what was discussed in this video. Always curious and anxious and eager to hear what y'all have to say. And thank you for making it to the very end. You did. You made it to the very end. Would you look at that? See you soon.